Hi, today's video is a guide to good practicing habits while getting back into playing an instrument or maybe picking one up for the first time. Let's get started. No matter what instrument you're playing, it's important to know the different parts of the instrument and how your instrument basically works. So the guitar is made up of a bigger body, a long neck, and here we have at the end tuning pegs which pull these strings, tightening them and relaxing them. On the other side of the string, we're connected to what's called the bridge. So twisting these tuning pegs will change our note. If you're playing a string instrument, it's important to know the names of each string. This will help you in making sure your strings are tuned to the right note. On guitar, we have E, A, D, G, B, and E. Most instruments have to be held in a particular way in order to be played correctly. Unless you have a guitar that's strings specifically for left-handed people, usually you need the long part of the guitar, the neck in your left hand, and the big part, the body, under your right hand. The acoustic guitar can either sit on your leg with that little curve, or with the body in the middle and that curve seated on your left leg. Both of these are acceptable forms of playing guitar and it really just matters what you're more comfortable with. Playing an instrument uses very small but very important muscles in our hands, wrists, and arms. So it's very important to make sure we're actually warmed up. Even though we're not doing any kind of heavy lifting, because these small muscles aren't used to doing the advanced and complex work that an instrument requires, it's actually very easy to injure ourselves. So one warm up I like to do is just to straighten my arm, make a gentle fist, and rotate. This is gonna help me warm up the muscles connecting my arm to my hand while keeping my wrist relaxed. I'll do this with both arms. And another one I'll do is keep my hand straight and do a simple up and down motion like a bird flapping its wings. It's important to never stretch beyond your capacity and just to do a comfortable range of motion that allows you to feel the extremities of your flexibility. Many instruments require us to use both hands in order to play them. This can be a huge challenge for the brain to focus on two different tasks at once. So what I like to do is always start off with just one hand. If you're a right-handed person, you're usually gonna start off with your right hand. I'll go and just with my thumb, I'll give a thumbs up gesture, place it on the string, and I'll play each string one by one. Once you've gotten down the coordination for that, it's important to actually say the names of the strings as you play them. This will help you build that mental map of knowing where you are on your instrument. E, A, D, G, B, E. In music, you should always challenge yourself to go one step beyond what you're comfortable with. So I'm comfortable with doing it one way, I'm gonna reverse it and go the other way. E, B, G, D, a, E. Now what if I create a pattern in which I skip a string, then bounce back one, skip a string, and bounce back? It'll sound like this. E, D, A, G, D, B, G, E. And backwards. E, G, B, D, G, A, D, E. These games might seem simple, but when you try them for yourself, you're gonna feel your brain working to stick to that mental map you've created. Once my right hand feels warmed up, I'll move on to my left hand. Now, on guitar and most string instruments, uh, your fingers need to work somewhat together. So a lot of beginning guitar players start off doing what I like to call the one-legged hop. They'll use one finger and jump around, or conversely, they might use multiple fingers, but jump in between them in an awkward and uncomfortable way. Completely removing themselves from the instrument and slamming their finger back down, creating a whole lot of work that they don't really need to do in order to play. We call playing a string without using the left hand an open string. For example, this would be open E and open B. As we put down our fingers, we actually make the vibrating part of the string a little bit shorter. Here's full length, open, 
Here's a little bit shorter and shorter and shorter. I'm reducing the amount of the string that's actually vibrating. And as I do that, the pitch gets higher and higher and higher. So a great way to warm up the left hand is just to practice using our fingers in conjunction. I'll go to my high E string, this one, and put down my first finger, then my second. And when I put down my second finger, my first one is still helping out. Third finger. Now we have a trio and fourth. All four fingers are working together to get that pinky strong enough to hold down that note. Once you get comfortable holding your fingers down at the same time and having them work together, you can play a little game. I call it one, two, three, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. And we can play it on every single string, just like this. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. Next string. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. Next string. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. And so on and so forth. Now that we understand some key concepts about how to use our right and left hands, and our hands are warmed up, we can start working on some music. Today I want to show you how to play the C scale. Music notes are named after letters in the alphabet, but not all letters. We're just using A through G, and that repeats itself infinitely. When we talk about the C scale, what we're doing is playing through that cycle starting and ending on C. Now we're going to see what that looks like on our guitar. We talked about our B string. So if we need to find C, well, it's going to be on that B string. It's actually the first fret. When I say fret, what I mean is the space between two of these lines. It kind of looks like a box on the guitar. So you could call it the first box if you want to. But the first fret on the B string is played by squeezing our finger down gently between those two lines, right in the middle. Let's move on to our next note, D. D is our third fret on the B string. In order to play my third fret, I can put three fingers down and have them work together so that I don't have to strain any of my fingers or my wrist. There's D. Then we have our open E string. Our first fret on the E string is F. Then we have 3rd fret G. Again, all three of my fingers are working together. Now we're going to slide our first finger up to the 5th fret. Count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's play that note. That's A. 3rd finger on the 7th fret. 5, 6, 7. That's B. And finally, our pinky on the eighth fret. That's C. If you didn't catch that the first time, that's okay. Watch it a couple times until you get it. Once you have your C scale down and you know where all the notes are, we have to get used to practicing fluidity. So the way we do that is that we play a note and we count to four. And that gives us just enough time to find the next note, set our finger down, be confident, and play the next note. I'll demonstrate so you understand what I mean. I'll count to four. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. Open E, two, three, four. Let's try that together one time. We're going to play the entire C scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. D, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. F, 
two, three, four. G, two, three. Slide up to A, two. That's the fifth fret. Four. B, two, three, four, and C, two, three. Back down. B, two, three, four. A, two. Slide and G, two, three. Four F two three four E two three find D two three four and C two three four Nice job if you didn't catch it that time try it a few times again even just watch my hands until you got it. Once you have it done at that speed, you can basically cut that in half to make it faster. C Two D two E two F two and so on. And once you've done that, you can play them one beat each. C D E F G. This kind of practicing, starting off very very slow, very methodical, and giving our brain time to think about the next step, and then gradually decreasing that time, is one of the best forms of practice and the best ways to get yourself from not being able to accomplish something to being able to do it comfortably, easily, and practically in your sleep. In our daily lives, we generally don't have to use our fingers independently of each other, unless we're driving in traffic and we get very mad. But when we're playing an instrument, it's a very common thing and we have to get used to it. But what about chords, where we're using multiple fingers at the same time, but in different positions on the instrument? This presents a huge challenge to any person trying to learn music. We're gonna start off with our C chord. The first thing I'm gonna do is teach you the notes and teach you the appropriate fingers to play the notes. And then we're gonna actually practice how to find that chord and how to practice it so that it's comfortable and it's in your muscle memory instead of something you constantly have to search for. Let's try it. First thing we're gonna do is find our A string. We're gonna put our third finger down on the A string. That's C. Then we're gonna find our D string and put our second finger down on the second fret of the D string. That's E. Try playing these notes together, C and E. Next, we're gonna have G, our open G string. That's very easy. I'm not holding anything down in that case. Let's play C, E, and G. That's three strings, three notes, but only two fingers down so far. Then we're gonna find our B string. And we're gonna hold down with our first finger, the first fret. Ooh. That's C. Now this might present a big challenge to a lot of people. The important thing when you're reaching for a stretch just like this is to not bend your wrist in an uncomfortable position. This is the type of thing that can cause a lot of injury. Our joints work best when they are in a gentle curve, not in a sharp angle. So just keep toying around with it until you can hold down those strings comfortably without breaking your wrist. So I'll review, we have C, A string, third fret, third finger. E, D string, second fret, second finger. Open G, and C on the B string, first fret, first finger. Lastly, we have our open E up top. So we're playing all our strings except for our low E. We don't always have that much time to find the chord. So once you've found the chord, here's a quick tip to help you get used to placing your fingers in place without thinking too much about it. Get at an angle where you can have a good look at your strings and leave your right hand hanging so that it's not doing any work at all. Then what we're gonna do is we're actually going to lift our fingers off the string, but have them hover gently in place. 
and then set them back down. Once again, gently in place, hovering, and back down. I'm never changing the shape of my hand. I'm only allowing my fingers to relieve their pressure and let go of the strain. Once you've done that a few times, you want to take it to the next step. This time, I'm actually going to completely open my hand without leaving the guitar. And then, with a watchful eye, guide my fingers back to the positions and try to have them arrive all at the same time. So once again, my hand is going to completely leave and I'll watch my fingers as they come back to have them all land around the same time. You want to avoid the one by one motion. See if you can bring them all in to the same place at the same time. Isn't it nice when everyone's on time to the party? Once you've gotten used to that, then you're going to go to the next step. You will completely remove your hand from the guitar. Let it hang. Look for your notes on the instrument. Identify them and imagine your fingers going to the appropriate places. Imagine your fingers, guide them with your mind and set them. Then the final step is to do either one of those, either the hover, the open, or the complete removal. And every time you land, strum your chord. So I'll try it with my hover. Hover, strum. Open, strum. Complete removal, strum. Playing an instrument is a lot about building a mental map. Just like driving, when we first start, we're not really sure about the proportions of our car or where exactly we are in reference to the lane. But as we drive more and more, we get used to navigating this extension of our bodies. And that's really what an instrument is. In order to build that map, we need to make sure we're practicing our muscle memory and using our letter note names, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, in order to always make sure we know where we are and we're not just guessing. I hope this video will help you get back into practice and back into enjoying the gift of music. I'll see you at the jam session.